Hi and welcome to the Vision Fly Fishing YouTube channel. I'm Daniel Bergman and today we're up here in beautiful Chonayok. Now we thought that we would take the opportunity to go a little bit more in depth of the fundamental and the basics of dry fly fishing. It's not going to be like a super deep uh, mega uh, detailed uh, video but just a short um, do's and don'ts uh, about dry fly fishing. So let's go out there we've seen some rising fish actually. Uh, I got this uh, nine foot standard tapered leader on. I'm just gonna extend that with um, I think the leader is 4x in the tip. I'm gonna extend it with like a meter of 0.15. Um, usually that is good, good enough. Don't need to go longer. And uh, like 5x is, yeah, which is 0.15 or something, so close to 0.16 millimeters is uh, thick enough even to fight fish in the in the heavier currents so it's going going lower lower can actually mean uh, losing fish with fly in their mouth which is not a good thing a longer leader that's um, I would say more than nine feet all the way up to in extreme scenarios up to 20 feet or something. It's also a good help to get a long drag free drift while you're casting in the, in the current. Um, if you got a shorter leader it's much easier that the the fly starts plowing on the water. Uh, most of the time we want to uh, let the fly drift freely uh, look to look like a natural insect. I had a tiny, tiny little mayfly on my uh, pinky finger as well when we were walking out here. Uh, hopefully they're not feeding on those because they're like a yeah, maximum 18 I would say. It's going to be hard to see in, in this wind. So here we have the Bibio. Uh, it's quite a big bug. Uh, what's characteristic with them is the the long back legs especially uh, that's also partially red so imitations with like like black imitations with uh, some red in it usually works really well uh, when they're feeding on these guys so we'll see I think I'll put on a Bibio imitation to start with because I see quite a lot of them on the water Okay, now I don't have any CDC in this fly, then I'm going to use my golf uh, floatant just because that's a little bit thicker and stays a little bit longer on, on materials that's not CDC. Okay, we had some fish really close to us, so <laughs> I'll start off just lobbing the fly out <laughs> and see what happens it's almost so short so it's hard to cast that short <laughs> yep <laughs> really cool <laughs> i don't think it's a big fish but well they're so strong, so it's really hard to tell also. Oh. I try to, when I'm fighting, fighting fish, I'm trying to, that was, he was super kind to me. <laughs> uh, when, when I'm fighting the fish, I'm trying to actually keep the fight as short as possible uh, for the safety of the fish. Uh, if you fight them too long on too light gear, it's, they, 
quite easily get uh, lactic acid in their blood and they can actually die from that. They get sort of stressed. That's not a bad fish. <laughs> it's a good start, good start. And the fly is out. The, what's so lovely about barbless hooks? Should we have a look at him? Look at that. Beautiful grayling. <laughs> okay. Apparently that fight was short enough. <laughs> okay. Okay, we're on to something. That feels so good. Well, that was super cool. Uh, I wonder if there are more of them out there. Uh, but now my fly is soaked, so I have to dry it. And except for um, floatant, something to dry your flies with when you've caught a fish is always a good idea. Uh, you could have like dry shake powder or uh, floatant powder or stuff like that. Um, but I have a tiny little cloth here that works really well. Um, Amadou is another classic that works really well. But just something, a piece, actually even a piece of paper works as long as you can keep it dry. Uh, because it will float much nicer if you dry it out before you start fishing. And then I do like a couple of fast air casts. Whoa, big fish of some sort. <laughs> cool. <laughs> just as, uh, on the just below me was a fish rising. <laughs> Let's see what is this? We're actually a little bit suspicious of we're having some white fish as here, a uh, white fish here as well. Yep, it's a nice white fish. And they're super soft in the mouth, so we'll see how this goes. <laughs> Come on, okay, let's get your head up. Whoa, that's a nice white fish. <laughs> super cool. Super fat. Have a look at that beauty. Super cool. That's the biggest white fish I've caught in a long time. Let's let it swim back. <laughs> oh, amazing. So I'm using a 9 foot 5 uh, Vision Superhero rod here. A uh, perfect all round rod, I think. The f average size up here and <laughs> how strong the fish is is just so d ridiculous. So I definitely prefer a 5 weight so you can fight the fish fast and hard uh, and release them safely. And I'm using a Vibe 85 line so you have a eight and a half meter head it's super easy to cast both uh, like bay casting and switch casting style but also overhand um, easy to mend yeah great all-round line that is really easy to cast
so we walked a little bit further down into the stream here uh, to see if we could find some more steadily eating fish and seen a couple of fish rising so it looks promising <laughs> he came from nowhere i just saw the mouth yeah and when i say steady risers i mean like they sort of take a take a bug more often and if you find them in the more in the areas with more current they usually stick around in the more or less the same spot for a longer time so you get uh, more chances than in the slow water Ugh. yeah we've seen a lot of mayflies uh, most of them much smaller than the imitation I have on but still they seem to like this and the good thing is that it's much more visible than the tiny ones in in really small hook sizes go back eat that mayfly good boy good boy okay let's try again you see when I cast a fly out now I try to after I let the cast go so to speak I lift my rod upstream and that brings the whole line uh, above uh, my rod tip which gives <laughs> the fly a nice long drift oh <laughs> strong one they're all strong ones fly is out Railing is up. Okay, so we came to a new spot a bit further down here, uh, and I saw one fish rising uh, just outside here in the outer seam current. Yeah, one more, just in the blank spot there. Okay, let's see if they want to eat the classic Norwegian fly dyret. It's gonna be really short drifts because we have like three different currents before we come out there. So, short drifts, we'll see. Uh, one good thing to do when you have like all these small currents in between you and the fish is to actually try to give quite a lot of slack line just when you let the cast go. It's dragging like crazy. <laughs> Okay, uh, just a quick note on the strike, uh, even though I failed this time, try to get tight line to the fish as soon as possible. Uh, sometimes that means lifting your rod straight up, but if you, for example, have like a, you cast it like uh, cr across the stream, quite long distance and you got a lo lot of loose line, then one good thing is to actually use the current to your advantage so when you do the strike you do it downstream of you then the power from the current will actually help you set the hook especially with grayling try to set the hook as soon as you see the strike otherwise you'll miss it they they can spit out the fly really fast because they'll know the difference between your imitation and the natural thing Oh, <laughs> he just looked at it. I'm gonna try to add a caddis pupa because some of the fish seem to be p taking 
just in the surface film. So yeah, that big one up there is definitely doing that. So I think I'll put, put that on straight away. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take like half a meter of tippet. Come on. Something like that. And I'm gonna tie this to the hook bend of the fly I was, was fishing just now. This particular fly, I've actually done a tying video on the fly dressing uh, YouTube channel. So you can have a look at it, just follow the link here. And this was tied on a barbed hook, so we get that barb away. And we're ready to rock and roll. Let's see if this works. And the good thing is that the pupa is lying so low in the surface films that it can be really hard to see the tags. But now we have a slightly bigger indicator, just half a meter above, that can actually help to, to see the strike. <laughs> And he took the he took the pupa right away. <laughs> that was like two meters outside of me. <laughs> it's a small guy, but still, uh, it's a good uh, receipt that the method definitely worked. Let's see if we can just unhook this fellow super quick and easy. Yep. What? Well, well, oh, oh. it's getting late and uh, quite dark also. I think we'll go back to camp and just heat up the sauna. Thanks for watching. See you later.